So what I'm going to do tonight is talk about antibiotics and antibiotic resistance. So last week, I started talking about the first mechanism of action. I talked about how penicillin actually affects cells and how it kills. And I'm going to do that for several more antibiotics today. Uh, but before I do, I want to talk about a general concept here, which is that some antibiotics are so-called bacteriostatic and others are bactericidal. And what that means is shown here. All right. So bactericidal, as the name implies, means they kill. So as you have a growing population, you add the antibiotic, the cells die. That's bactericidal. Bacteriostatic work differently. So cells are growing, you add the antibiotic, and there's no further growth or cell division. So they just stop. But they don't actually lice or break open or die. So my first question to get you awake tonight is, if an antibiotic is only bacteriostatic, why do you think it's still useful in treatment of bacterial infections? And you can discuss for 30 seconds about that. So it, it's stopping growth, that's good. So it's not going to get worse. But in addition, you have an immune system. All right, so your immune system is on the lookout for things like bacterial infections and will clean out the bacteria. So even, even if the antibiotic just stops growth, the immune system will take care of the remaining cells that are there. So that's why bacteria static are very useful, as I said here. Stopping growth and division allows the immune system to destroy the remaining bacteria. Okay, so now we're going to talk about different types of antibiotics and how they work. As I said last week, I talked about penicillin affecting the cell wall, and we'll come back to that. But today I want to talk about other antibiotics. So the first antibiotic I want to refer to targets DNA replication. Okay, I showed this slide last week. You have DNA, goes to RNA, goes to protein. We're going to focus up here on DNA. So DNA, when, you, uh, when the bacteria wants to divide and make a new cell, it of course has to copy all its DNA. And it uses an enzyme called DNA polymerase to do that. DNA, as you might recall, is a double-stranded helix which has different base pairs which match together. A always goes with T, adenine always with thymine, cytosine with guanine. The beauty of this molecule is that if you unzip it, like a zipper, then you know that if there is a guanine on the left side here, the uh, replication machinery should put a cytosine in to make a copy. And that's what's happened as shown here, which is a little fuzzy. Here's the existing strand of DNA. It unzips, and DNA polymerase makes a copy of the complementary strand, we call it. So that is what happens. Now, one other thing to know about DNA, in bacteria in particular, is first of all, bacterial DNA is almost always a circle. In addition, that circle isn't just laying flat like this. It is super coiled. And what that means, it's all twisted up. Uh, amongst itself, and I'll show you a video in a moment about that. So it gets nicked and wound, so it has a lot of tension in the molecule. And this is very important for a couple of reasons. One is a DNA molecule is huge compared to the size of the bacteria, and they need to fold it up into the right size to even fit in a bacteria. In addition, this gives some energy to the molecule they can be used for other processes like transcription. So uh, those of you who are old enough to remember when we had telephones uh, that were attached to a wall, you remember that they were constantly getting twisted up like this, and you were always unwinding them and things like that. 
This is equivalent to what the DNA does. It gets wound up in a certain way like this. And then there are enzymes which can uh, break the double strand and wind it either more strongly or less strongly. As you remember, this is a closed circle. It can't just swim, uh, move around. Now, when the cell wants to replicate the DNA, it has to unzip this. And you can imagine that if I start unwinding this, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter on this end. And that will stop transcription from happening or replicate, sorry, replication from happening simply because it gets too hard to unwind it. So you need enzymes which go before the DNA polymerase and after it to unwind and loosen that tension ahead or reintroduce the winding on the other side. And the way it does this, it actually cut, the enzyme cuts the double strand DNA, unwinds it, and puts it back together. And those enzymes are called topoisomerase. And that's shown here. So topoisomerases are needed to unwind the DNA during DNA replication or to wind it back up. There are, in bacteria, there's another enzyme called gyrase, which works essentially the same as topoisomerase. It's a type of topoisomerase. In addition, when you copy a whole circular piece of DNA like this, at the end of the replication process, you end up with the two strands linked together. So they can't come apart and go into the two cells. And so you need topoisomerase to unlink those two strands. So it's an extremely important enzyme. If you don't have it, the cell cannot divide, basically. One of the antibiotics or classes of antibiotics is called fluoroquinolones. And fluoroquinolones act by blocking DNA gyrase or topoisomerase 2. So what's shown here is the DNA, and here is DNA gyrase. DNA gyrase binds the DNA, and what it's supposed to do is cut, twist, and put it back together. It starts that process by cutting, but a fluoroquinolone like ciprofloxacin binds there and prevents it from putting the DNA strands back together. So in the end, you end up with a double-stranded break in your DNA, in the cell's DNA, and this is usually lethal. So a double-strand break in the DNA means the cell can no longer replicate and live. Fluoroquinolones are a class, as I said, as shown here. This is the chemical structure. I want you to notice in chemical structures, those of you who aren't used to this, an R group means that there are many variations. So for example, ciprofloxacin shown here is a type of fluoroquinolone and it's R group, this one is shown here. They're named fluoroquinolones because of this F, the fluoride group. Uh, yes. Now, fluoroquinolones act on gyrase and topoisomerases, but later generations of fluoroquinolones have been modified to be able to work primarily on topoisomerase 2 to inhibit daughter strand separation. And these seem to work better in gram-positive bacteria. So in summary, Fluoroquinolones block DNA replication. They create double-strand breaks in the DNA, and they can cause mutations in the DNA. They generally lead to bacterial cell death. Okay, now quickly I'm just going to tell you briefly about one other antibiotic, which is called rifampicin. So here's our DNA and DNA polymerase. Well, the next step in making uh, doing Protein synthesis is making RNA, and this enzyme here, RNA polymerase, is required to make RNA. 
uh, rifampicin binds RNA polymerase and just stops it. It binds, but then can't do anything. And this is commonly used in the treatment of tuberculosis.